Okay, uh, so since we are talking about uh, a loading txt file into Python, so I just also want to introduce some uh, very useful uh, tools and functions that in Python. The first one is called counter. So counter is a very great uh, function that can help us to count the number of the items that appears in a list or within a string. So this is the counter function is in the collections module. So if you remember that the modules, uh, normally we need to import the modules into Python. And next we can use um, that counter um, method or the, the counter function. Uh, so it will return a dictionary uh, where the elements are stored as keys and also counts are stored as values. Okay. Uh, so, for example, if we have, let's say, uh, A, A, uh, and also string B in the list, and if we bring that one to this counter um, a function, the return result will be a dictionary where the key will be each item, and the value will be the number of times that uh, they showed up in this um, list or in this um, string. So the a will be 2 and the B will have the value of 1 okay in this case and the counter also has a most common uh, method so it will return a list of the top n elements so in this case the n is defined within this method okay so for example in this case if you want top 1 the result will be just a only okay because in this example there are two A's in this string. So if you want top two, and you will have A and also B. Okay, uh, so let's see one example that in Python. Okay, so first let's import the counter. So uh, let's say from collections, let's import C is capitalized, counter. Okay, so now within this module, we just import the function because we just need that function. So we can use from that module import counter. And normally, uh, by default, the collections should be installed uh, in most Python editors. Okay, so let's say that the count result equals. So now we just use this count function. And here, let's just types a list let's say we have uh, just type a list uh, let's say we have several a's and we have two of the letter b and also one of the letter c okay so now let's print this result okay so now you can see we have a dictionary that uh, A has two, there are two, uh, three A's, two B's, and also one C. And we can also use that most common. So let's say we want print dot most common. And so here we want most common two. Okay, so we just want the, the most common two and see how it look like. Okay, so you can see the most common will retain a list okay where uh, each item is in a tuple okay so um, so here you can see it will return a list and each item is in a tuple and now we can use a for loop to iterate all the um, all the tuple so for result in this and we can print the result Okay, so now we have the uh, the word and also a count the word and also count that in a, each single tuple. And since we know that there are two items in each tuple, so we can actually unpack this tuple. So we see that for word and also count, and we can actually print word and also count. All right, so let's do it. So we have word A and also count is three. 
and would be the count is two. So if we see most common one, and we only have a. All right, so that is an example that using the counter uh, function. Okay, so here comes to my to our first exercise. So we have we have the GMU uh, news that you TXT file. So can you find out the top ten most common words in the GMU TXT file? Okay, so think about that with by combining the counter function and also the open function and also with and statement. So can you find out the top 10 most common words from the GMU TXT file? So you can pause the video here and also you can try to figure out it on your own. And also after let's say a few minutes, so you can resume the video and also you can see my solution. Okay, so hopefully you you have uh, you have tried your own solution. So here, uh, I'm going to demo my solution. So first, we have to open that GMU word. So we say with open GMU underscore news .txt, and in the read mode, as GMU underscore news. Okay, and let's. Let's get the, the news content. So let's news content equals uh, GMU news object dot read. Okay, and if we print the news content, right, we have this string. Okay, we have this very, very long string. And next, so we want to convert this string into a list, OK? Uh, so we want to convert uh, this uh, string into a, a word list. And you may ask him that, OK, so the count function also works for string. So why don't you count the string directly? Because we are looking for the most common words. So if we say, let's say, result equals count so if we apply the count directly onto this string how will the result look like okay so it will count each single character as an item and that is not what we want okay so what we want is that we want count the single word okay so we want let's say we want have a word list which equals, you know, this content. And we know that uh, to count that as a word list, we can use that split function. So we split. And now if we print that word list, so now you can see we put each single word as an item in this list. And the next, we can um, count the word number of the words that in this word list so here let's say the result equals now we apply the counter to this word list okay so now if we print the result you can see that and has been used uh, 18 times four has been used seven times okay so now we are close to our uh, final uh, result so uh, however, I was asking that I just want the top 10 words. OK, so you can use uh, the most common one uh, method to return the top 10 words. So let's say for word and also count in result dot most common 10 colon. Let's print word and also count okay so now let's write you can see it's very nice so we have the top 10 the most common words so and fall to the of okay and also uh the number four okay and the president etc okay so that answered our first exercise so let's 
uh, say okay so this is exercise one all right okay so now let's I, I also want to introduce another um, uh, method that is a very also very common in Python that is called uh, list comprehension so list comprehension will take an iterable object such as strings or list and pass each item to do something that we can create a new list okay uh, so the syntax is like the new list equals and we put that into this square bracket okay and we say that for each single item okay for each single item in this iterable item for in this uh, iterable object so we can do something on each single item all right so that is a syntax so uh, so this may sound like a little bit um, complicated uh, so let's see an example that in Python okay so let's say we cr define a number oops, a number list equals let's say one two three four okay so here let's say we want to generate a new list by using this list comprehension so that's here i want to say that uh for i in this number of the list so we can do something okay uh, for each single item so that i will say i plus one okay so Define the action first and say for each single item in that list. So now you, it, you will see that I, and the first item is one, well, uh, plus one, and also we are, we are equals two, that will be the first item in this new list. And two plus one equals three, three will be the second item in this list. And followed by three plus one equals four, that is third item. And finally, 4 plus 1 equals 5, so 5 will be the last item. So now let's print this new list. Here you can see we have this new list, that is 2, 3, 4, 5. Okay, so that is a list comprehension. So um, this may sound like a little bit tricky initially, however, that is very useful that later that we, we will use that a lot uh, in Python. Okay, so now back to our uh, GMU news. So my second question is that, can you convert all the words into lower cases uh, by using the list comprehension? Okay, and you can pause the video here and also try it on your own. And later on, you can resume the video and also we all do it together. All right, so here, this is my solution. So uh, let's say we first, we just copy this one from our uh, previous exercise. So exercise two. Okay. Uh, so we open the GMU news and also we load that one into this GMU news content. And we get this word list. Okay. So now we can use this list comprehension. We see that lower case list equals so let's create a list so we say for word in this word underscore list so here we are going to define the actions on those on each single word so we want to convert that into lower cases so if you remember that for string we do have the lower function a method okay after doing that now if we print this low case list so now we will convert all the words into the lower cases. Okay. And if you are interested, you can also um, just copy the code previously. And now you can count the most common word. Okay. Uh, in this lower case list. So let's see if we still have the same result. Okay. So now in this case, you can see and actually is the most popular one. And followed by four, the two, etc. Okay, so that is also a uh, list comprehension. And finally, I also want to talk about the string format. 
Okay, so stream format is a way that uh, you can you can uh, control what you want to display in your stream, the final output. That basically means that strings that contain this replacement field that are strong are surrounded by these curly brackets. Okay, so anything outside of the curly bracket is considered those literal text and which will be copied on change to the output. Okay, so let's see one example. Let's say that print, now we define a string. Within this string, we have this first and a second pair of the curly bracket. And the com is and dot format. So now we provide, okay, so what will be used to replace those two curly bracket? So the first will be Tom will be used here. The second one is this one. So 60,000 will be replaced here. So the output will be Tom's income is dollar. OK. So that will be the output of the stream format. So this is very useful that especially in the next semester, so when we are talking about SQL, so we will use string format a lot. And in string format, you can also specify the order of this replacement field. So for example, if you type number one for the first curly bracket and also number zero for the second curly bracket, so the first item will go to the curly bracket that contains zero. And also the second item will go to this curly bracket that contains one. Remember that in Python, the index starts from zero. OK, so let's just simply try those two string format uh, in Python. So print. OK, so let's type curly bracket is. So now we type the dollar. OK. Period. OK, so this we just finish a string that has two place that need to be filled, uh, need to be uh, replaced so that after that string dot format. So first we will use Tom and second one will be a number. So that is 60,000. OK, so if you run it, you can see Tom is now replaced the first pair of this curly bracket. And if you see another one, so let's see uh, Jim. Now you can see Jim is now replaced here. And you can also specify the orders. For example, if you want uh, the first item go here and the second item go here, and you can do that. So now if you run it, you can see 60,000 is the second item. So that will replace this curly bracket and James is a first item that will replace this curly bracket. So if you switch the position in this format, okay, and you will have the right sentence being printed out.